There's a toxic mystery at West Seattle's Longfellow Creek. Despite a restoration of the creek in 1999, the stream is a deadly place for coho salmon. What some early stream surveys discovered was that coho that were coming back into these urban watersheds were dying before they uh, had a chance to, to spawn. Nathaniel Scholes of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration has led the study. Oh, there's one. During each spawning season each fall, scientists walk the portion of the creek available to the salmon. NOAA's Tiffany Linbo and Steve Dam of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service will count living coho and check dead salmon to see if they spawn before dying. This is a totally intact fish, so we'll get a full post mortem on this one. These are the eggs. She hasn't spawned yet. The females uh, will always uh, spawn all of their eggs, or most of their eggs, into the nest that they build. And so the presence of eggs in females are how we essentially measure the, the severity of the pre mortality phenomena across an entire spawning season. Oh, looks like another dead fish. And another one? Yeah, there's another one right there, yeah, actually. I'll, I'll grab that one. That looks like a female. Him and her. It's Romeo and Juliet. This is typical of a, of a healthy female ready to spawn and uh, she was unable to do that. Many theories have been advanced and the researchers have had to see if they were in fact the cause. We've done a lot to rule out water quality conventional parameters like dissolved oxygen and temperature. Uh, they don't have any evidence that there's a, a bacterial pathogen or a virus that would be expected to kill them. These fish are relatively healthy. When they come in, they seem to be in good physical condition. But the fish don't stay that way. Oh, there's one. I don't think he's doing too good. When the fish become affected by this phenomena, this pre spawn mortality phenomena, it, it's really obvious. First thing you notice is that the fish are no longer responsive to you, your being in the creek. He's not reacting as he should be. No, he's not reacting. He's very lethargic. Longfellow Creek is an urban oasis that also catches the runoff from commercial buildings, parking lots, and streets. There tends to be a real cocktail of chemicals, all of which are present in urban stream flows at relatively low levels. And if you look at the water quality monitoring data, we know what's coming off the landscape in urban stormwater. It's metals and hydrocarbons and these other things. This is not definitive by any measure, but it is leading us towards uh, looking at motor vehicles potentially and runoff from impervious surfaces as being involved. But before they know for sure, the scientists must understand more about coho. We know that they're exposed to these urban contaminants, but it's another thing entirely to say that these urban contaminants are killing the fish. And the reason for that is that we lack a lot of biological context. What scientists do know is that Longfellow Creek is not an isolated case. We've had anecdotal reports of this phenomena for coho happening pretty much up and down the West Coast, from San Francisco to British Columbia. The reason that we have focused a lot of our efforts here is that we're trying to use Longfellow Creek essentially as an outdoor laboratory that will help us anticipate what the conservation challenges will be for coho salmon going 10, 20, 30, 40 years into the future because we expect a lot of the population growth that, that, that are, uh, is projected for the region to be concentrated in lowland areas. Meaning that the future of the coho goes back to the people living and working along these streams. Stormwater is basically about what everybody does in a day-to-day -day context. It's about driving a car or washing a car or how you use chemicals around your home. So what people do in their day-to-day -day lives uh, potentially can end up in the creek.